Well, welcome back, everybody. I'm going to play cook tonight, show you how I make chuck steak. One thing people are concerned about on a carnivore diet is uh, how much the meat costs. And if you're going to do this, you're going to want to find inexpensive ways to eat in between the expensive steaks, and you don't have to eat steak every day. I eat a steak every other day, and I eat hamburger, chuck steak, chicken, and other inexpensive foods in between. And I find that I'm spending much less money on carnivore than I ever used to spend on food before. This particular chuck steak weighs a little over four pounds. I usually portion my hamburger out in one pound packages. So I expect to be able to get four meals out of this one chuck steak. And I think this thing cost me 15 or $16. I get them at Sam's Club and I get there early, try to be the first one in and run to the meat counter because Sam's marks the meat down 25% uh, if it is within three days of its use-by date. And I think I probably paid $30 for two of these uh, about that size. Now I salt them with uh, that Himalayan pink salt uh, and I use that on my meat and I have Redmond real salt that uh, I use for a lot of things but generally the hamburgers and the, uh, and the meat I use I use that uh, Himalayan pink salt and I've got this little electric grinder which makes it nice. Now you, you're going to want to sear this almost the same way you sear a steak after you sous vide it. And uh, I like to use these carbon steel pans. They're fabulous. I uh, always sear in either butter or bacon grease. But I like the flavor of butter when it comes to steak. Want to make sure you sear the edges first. This thing's big. <laughs> you got to wrestle it around. I've cut out uh, some of the video where it would be boring watching me sear it for 30 seconds to a minute on every side. But the whole process of prepping this thing to put it in a slow cooker uh, isn't going to take more than 10 minutes. And the beautiful thing about this method is that you just, it's, it's, it's so simple, you just basically sear the, sear the chuck steak, you put it in the slow cooker, you come back eight or nine hours later, you shred it up and pour it in a Tupperware thing, put it in the fridge. I never eat it the same day I cook it, and you'll see why when we get to the end of this video. I know this is really exciting to watch, but uh, what, else, what else do you say during a cooking video? I just put it in the slow cooker. Now the way I cook it, you don't put anything else in there. You've salted the meat, you've seared it. There's no liquid in the, in the slow cooker other than the butter that was uh, left, because why would you want to waste that? But no, nothing else. So in the slow cooker it goes, pour the rest of the butter in there, I'm going to put the lid on it, set the slow cooker, and you're done until pretty much you're getting ready to put it in the refrigerator. I set the slow cooker for nine hours, but I think on this particular cook, it was ready in eight hours when I took it out. Don't want to overcook it. Put it on low, and away you go. And I came back after three and a half, four hours here, just to see what was happening. And you can see how much liquid has already come out of the meat and into the slow cooker. Now we're back with three hours left to go. And you can see that the, the liquid is almost getting to the top of the meat. And this is a good time to check it with a thermometer if you want to. I think the the best temperature would be 205, 210 tops. 
um, for slow cooking meat like this. If I'm not mistaken, I think this at this point was about 195, 196, somewhere in there. So it wasn't ready yet. The way you tell it's ready is if you can take a fork and shred it very easily. You want the meat to just fall apart. There you go. Almost 196. So we're about eight hours in right now, and uh, I'm in, I'm busy shredding it up, and I just shred all that stuff up in in the liquid. Now, everything in that slow cooker was in the meat. So in that liquid that's in the slow cooker, you have about half fat and about half collagen. And you want to eat all of that. So I pour from the slow cooker into the, the refrigerator container. It, this one is not Tupperware. This happens to be. I got this at a restaurant supply place. It's already shredded up. You just pour it in there. Put the lid on. Put it in the fridge. And the next day, you take a frying pan. Put it on medium. You don't want to cook it. You want to just heat it up to where it just starts to bubble and the meat's hot because it's already thoroughly cooked. You don't want to you don't want to overcook it or burn it. Now if you look at the side of the pan you can see how much of that is fat and everything below the fat is a, is a, a gelatin and that gelatin is just chock full of collagen and other good healthy stuff and one of the reasons I like this method is that no matter how fat that chuck steak was, you're going to eat every bit of what was in that steak, including the collagen, the fat, and everything else. And the ratio of fat to protein in that pan right there is about exactly what you need because most foods in nature are going to come right out of the animal with the appropriate fat to protein ratio. And I chuckled here because I thought it looked a little like a piece of cake, maybe meat cake. So I just heat it up. And again, I've, I've got maybe 10, 15 minutes of time invested in initially cooking it, prepping it and cooking it in the slow cooker. And then I got five minutes to get it ready to eat. It's it's very, very easy, and it's almost foolproof, and it's very good for you. So there you go. I usually just take a bowl. There's about a pound of beef there. Doesn't look like very much. That's a pretty good-sized bowl. But I'll tell you, after you eat that, you're pretty satisfied. Now I have the obligatory showing you how it tastes right before we end the video. So with that, thanks for watching this. It doesn't get any easier to cook than this. And if you do this, you've got four meals out of it.